I'd like to call on Mark on stage. Hey, it's, uh, it's great to be here in India. I, I, always, I always love coming here. The energy here is, is awesome. Uh, so thank you guys all for coming out here today for uh, our first town hall Q&A in, in India. I'm, I'm so excited to be here. So I think Anki just gave you a sense of, of what we're going to do. But you know, these town hall Q&As are a really important way and, and part of, of how we run uh, the company and the community at Facebook, right? Because for many years, you know, every week inside the company, we've had a Q&A with employees where people can just raise any question they want. Uh, they ask hard questions. They give us feedback. And it's a good opportunity for me to hear from people about what they're thinking about. So we recently started doing this for our community as well and have been traveling to a lot of places around the world to hear from our community. And you know, India has 130 million people uh, who use Facebook. It's the second biggest country. Uh, so it's really important, I think, to have a chance to hear from all of you today and hear what you're thinking about. And, you know, we'll probably get some ideas for how we can make Facebook a better service. So thank you guys. I, I really appreciate uh, all of you guys coming out here today to have this dialogue. Now, before we get started, there's, there's one topic that I want to touch on, and that's, you know, as we were flying in to, to Delhi, I received word that there was this terrible earthquake, right, and it centered in Afghanistan, but, you know, also affected people in, in Pakistan, and, uh, you know, our team who was on the ground here and a lot of my friends uh, here sent me notes saying that we could feel the whole place shake for a minute. Uh, and, you know, it's moments like these when it's so important for people to be able to come together and to know what's going on with the people that you love. Right? We, we often talk about our mission at Facebook as helping people connect, and you know, a lot of times people think about that as you know, sharing photos or you know, simple things that are going on throughout your day. But when there's a disaster, it's you know, all you want to know is, is, what is, is whether the people that you love are safe. And, um, one of the things that I'm really happy about is, you know, we activated the safety check tool that we have for the community on Facebook. And already, uh, more than 3 million people have marked themselves as safe, and more than 150 million people uh, in the community have been notified that their friends and, and loved ones are, are safe uh, from the impact of the earthquake. So um, I, I really appreciate all the, the effort that, that people have gone to to make sure that they're, uh, that they tell the, their friends and that their, their loved ones can, can hear that they're safe. And um, this is just another uh, thing that, that you know, our community does that I think is, is pretty important in the world. So I, um, you know, we're, we're continuing to think about everyone who uh, was hurt and ha was affected by this crisis. And uh, we'll be doing more to, to try to help out. All right. We'll get started with some questions. Question time. So uh, we receive literally thousands of questions to your postmark. Uh, and there are a bunch of questions which have been selected from that thread. Some of those people are here in person to ask you those questions. The bunch of uh, students who uh, sent in questions when they registered to join the town hall. And we will take some of those questions from there. And then there are some questions which we will uh, take from the live audience. So I know nobody is shy. So please put up your hand, and I'll come to you. So we have our first questioner here, uh, Ankit. Hi, Mark. Hey. Uh, my name is Alkit Jain, and I'm a chartered accountant by profession. So my question is very simple. And why are you showing so much interest in India? Answer honestly. <laughs> so our mission is to give everyone in the world the power to share what's important to them and to connect every person in the world. And India is the world's largest democracy. It's you know, one of the, the biggest countries where if you really have a mission of connecting every person in the world, you can't do that without helping to connect everyone in India. So we think about this in two ways. First, 
there are already uh, more than 130 million people in India who use Facebook. It is uh, one of the largest communities that we have across the world, and we take our responsibility to serve uh, the, the people in India who are, who are already using Facebook and WhatsApp, which is also in our family of, of products. Um, we take that very seriously. So having the ability to be here and, and talk to people and, and hear what they need from us and what we're, what we're doing well or what we're doing that we can improve and need to do better, uh, that, that's a huge thing that, that we need to do for, for our community. The second part is that there are a billion people in India who do not have access to the internet yet. And if what you care about is connecting everyone in the world, then you can't do that if there are so many people who don't even have access to basic connectivity. Now, you know, everyone here probably has access to the internet in some capacity, and when you've had it for a while, you start to, uh, you know, take it for granted. You know, you, you think about it as it, maybe it's something that I can use to get access to entertainment or, um, or you know, some basic communication tools. But it's easy to forget that if you haven't had access to the internet, um, it's really a tool that provides uh, some vital infrastructure for your life, right? I mean, it can provide educational information for people who don't have access to good schools. Uh, it can provide health information on how to you know, take care of your child or avoid diseases for people who don't have access to good doctors or, or health infrastructure. Uh, it can provide access to job listings uh, for people who live in, in poorer villages where the economy isn't very strong. You know, so the research has, has shown on this that for every 10 people who get access to the internet, uh, about one person uh, gets a new job, uh, a job is created, and about one person gets lifted out of poverty. So there's just a tremendous opportunity in India, right? If, if there are a billion people who are not connected, then this is one of the biggest opportunities, I think, to uh, help develop the economy here and, uh, and to help um, alleviate poverty and, and, and really lift up a lot of folks. And, you know, it's easy to talk about this as something that will be important for, for India, but I actually think that connecting people in India is one of the most important things that we can do for the whole world, right? Because it's not just uh, improving the lives of, of, of people here um, that getting access to the internet will have. It's also that, you know, there are all these ideas that, uh, you know, entrepreneurs and students have here that the rest of the world doesn't have access to today because those people don't have the ability to share what they, uh, what they know, right, in their experience. Um, you know, all the things that uh, entrepreneurs and students could produce if they had access to these tools, um, you know, everyone around the world, not just in India, but every other person in the world is, is currently robbed of that opportunity because folks don't have the opportunity that they need here uh, to, to create uh, the companies or, or opportunities that they want. So, that's why I care about it. You know, we have, we have a large community of people here. It's the second biggest community that we have in the world, and we care deeply about serving that well and giving everyone the, the best tools that we can to help people share everything that they want. And we really want to get the next billion people online. And, um, and if we can play a role in, in either of those things, then, um, then that's something that I, I personally care a, a lot about. And that's why I'm so excited to be here. Our next question is from you, Ankita. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Mark. Welcome to India. Hey, thank you. I, I am Ankita, and I am with the Railways, and I am also a sports person. So I, uh, I need to ask you that uh, although we are 130 million users here, how do you wish to connect with those who are not on FB or who don't even have any access to Internet? Yes. Yeah, this is the key question, right? So, so if I just talked a bit about why I thought connecting everyone to the internet was important. I, I think, um, you know, what, what you're asking about is kind of how you do this, right? How do you get uh, a billion people uh, onto the internet and, and to improve their lives in that way? And, you know, the first thing that I'd say is just we can look at the efforts that we've had with internet.org and our other programs um, around the world and here in India. You know, internet.org is, we've We've had this program to spread internet connectivity. It is live in uh, more than 24 countries, or 24 countries and, and growing around the world. Um, and here's a new stat that we haven't shared before, is there are 15 million people around the world who have access to the internet now 
because of the efforts that we're taking with internet.org um, who, who wouldn't have had it otherwise. And you know, if, if you believe these, these stats uh, that, that we've seen that show that for every you know, 10 people get access to the internet, there's you know, a new job is created and a person is lifted out of poverty, then you know, connecting 15 million people to the internet around the world is, uh, you know, that's a pretty good impact. You know, so for, I, I've seen some cynical reporting saying that, oh, this is, the program isn't doing as well as we want. I don't know, if you don't think that's good, I, I, I want to know what you think is good. Um, but, you know, this is, it's, we're off to a good start around the world. Um, what we found is, here in India, uh, almost a million people are, now have access to the internet because of, of these efforts who, who didn't uh, before. What we find is that in the places that have access to these free basic services, um, the rate of people getting on the internet doubles, right? So, you know, we, we've started it in, in some areas and, and it hasn't expanded throughout the whole country yet. So in the areas that, that have it, uh, internet growth rate is, is twice as much as it, um, as it was before. So that's the, the main message that I deliver is, you know, this is a program that is working around the world. We just started in India a bit earlier this year, so it's still a bit earlier in its growth, but uh, we know that this works and we know that it will connect more people. In terms of how exactly it works, uh, there are, you kind of need to break down, there are about four billion people in the world who don't have access to the internet. And they kind of break down into three, there are three reasons why people might not have access. Um, one, is we call availability, right? It's, you might have a phone, but there's no network that's available for you to access. Uh, the second is affordability, right? Which is you have a phone and you might be able to access uh, a network, but it's very expensive or you might not be able to afford it. And the third issue, which is actually the biggest, interestingly, is awareness. And what that means is, you know, you have uh, a phone and you have access to the, and, and you can get access to the internet and you can afford it, uh, but you um, may not know why you would want to use the internet. And you know, if you grew up and you never had access to a computer and you never used the internet, and someone asked you if you wanted to buy a data plan, um, it's not a surprise that a lot of people's question is, well, what do I get with the data plan, right? Why would I want to spend um, some of the money that I have on, on getting a data plan? So we're doing things on all three of these to, to basically break down all of these barriers. Um, on availability, uh, there are a lot of places in the world where there just aren't good networks. It's too expensive to have the traditional internet infrastructure spread all the, way, all the way out to a lot of these very rural areas. So we're investing in new ways to deliver connectivity. Uh, Solar-powered planes that can fly up in the air and beam down connectivity. Uh, we just announced a project to uh, put a satellite up in, in space that can beam down connectivity. So those are new ways to deliver connectivity. The second, for affordability, we're very focused on just making it so that our apps and others use less data, right? So if you go back a, about a couple of years, uh, the Facebook app now uses, I think it's about uh, one-tenth of the amount of data as it used to. So that means that not only does it cost you one-tenth as much because you don't have to pay for that data, but it's also faster and more reliable because you know, there's less to, to transfer over the wire. So that's a big deal. And then the third issue of awareness, uh, what we've done is we've tried to introduce this, this program, Free Basics. And what that does is it makes it so that people can have access to, uh, you know, some not, not the richest kind of media, not streaming videos or, um, you know, big app downloads, the stuff that kind of consumes a lot of bandwidth, but the basic utilities. So stuff like education information or health information or uh, job listings or Wikipedia or basic communication tools or basic news. And what we found is that that ends up being very useful. People use those things, they get on the internet, and then within uh, about a month, about half of the people who have tried out free basics now realize why the internet is so great and why they want to use it, and then they become full paying customers of the full internet. So the goal of free basics is not just to provide uh, free basic services to everyone, but it's also to give people this uh, on-ramp so that way they can uh, start experiencing that and then eventually uh, and, and relatively quickly start paying for the overall internet. So that's the game plan. We're going to work on all three, availability, affordability, and awareness. Um, it's already working around the world. 15 million people now uh, have access to the internet who wouldn't have otherwise. And we're still early, so it's growing and we expect a lot more to, to come soon. So this is a question which lots and lots of people want answers to. It's the top, one of the top voted questions on the thread. 
and I think it's a serious one, r deserving a serious right. answer. Right. And this is, I seriously don't want to get any more invitations on Candy Crush. How can I stop getting it? There you go. All right. See, so this is where these town hall Q&As are really useful. <laughs> because I actually saw this question that it was the top voted question on my thread. So I sent a message to the person who runs the team in charge of our developer platform. And, and, I, and I said, you know, by the time that I do this town hall Q&A, I, I, I think it would be good if we had a solution to this problem. <laughs> so we do. Um, so she emailed me uh, like later that night and was like, all right, look, there, there are some tools uh, that are kind of outdated that allow people to send invitations to people who have never used a game and have gotten a lot of invitations in the past, uh, but you know, don't play games on Facebook. And you know, we hadn't prioritized um, shutting that down because we just had other priorities, but if this is the top thing that people care about, then we'll prioritize that and we'll do it. So we're doing it. Okay, audience question, who wants to ask a question? Okay, I, I'll come there uh, in a bit. Uh, what's your name? Uh, my name is Shashwat. Yeah. Hi Mark, I am Shashwat, Hi. and I lead the technology team at Holidify.com. So my question was related to the technology that you guys are working on, the Oculus Rift. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to know that how guys you have decided to, are you guys planning to incorporate that somehow to the social media? And the second part of my question is, how can, as a developer, we'll be able to get more, uh, more of that information, and how can we use that technology into our stuff, and our, we can work on that? Absolutely. So for your second question first, we have dev kits for Oculus. Uh, you can already get them. Um, it's, it's a few hundred dollars, and we're shipping them all around the world. We've shipped more than, uh, I think it's more than 100,000 or uh, almost 200,000 dev kits. So uh, you can get your hands on one. You can start building for Oculus. Um, it's, an, it's an awesome experience, and, and I encourage you to do that if you're interested. In terms of how this fits into the overall vision, you know, one of the big trends that we've seen uh, on, on Facebook and, and on the internet overall is that as time goes on, people get these richer and richer mediums for sharing what's important to them. So if you go back you know, 10 or 15 years, most of what we shared on the internet was, um, was text, right? And you know, over the last five or 10 years, now a lot of it is photos. Then it's, it's visual uh, and you know, so photos, other kind of graphical content. Um, over the next period of time, we're really, I think, entering this golden age of internet video, where the primary way that we're going to both share our experience and consume uh, other people's kind of experience and ideas online is gonna be through video. So you've seen this progression from text to photos that were graphic but static to videos that are now kind of animated and richer. But you know, I don't think videos are the end of the line, right? Because as rich as a video is in terms of telling a story, it's, um, you know, it's still uh, just um, you know, small screen, it's still 2D, and um, you know, I think that, that people want uh, a, an even richer medium, right? You, you want to be able to feel like you're there. And that's what virtual reality and, and augmented reality can do. Uh, they can make it so that you, you actually feel like you're um, right there in the scene. So, you know, my wife and I are, are expecting a, a, a daughter um, sometime soon. Um, and, you know, one of the things that I look really forward to doing is, um, you know, traditionally people, you know, write to their... Uh, thank you, by the way. I'm, I'm very excited about that as well. Um, <laughs> You know, people will you know, write to their parents, oh, you know, our, our baby had her first step. So, or, you know, you take a photo, or more recently, you take a video. I, I mean, I want my family to be able to be there, right? I mean, so to take a, a, um, like a, a video or capture that experience of, of her taking her first steps, and then to be able to share that experience and make it so that my, my parents, um, my friends who weren't maybe able to be there in person, um, can feel like they're there and experiencing that and, um, and, and seeing her do that and, and take those steps. And um, that, I think, is going to be really magical. So in terms of how this fits into the overall vision of social media, you know, just as time goes on, the, the, um, the trend is towards richer and richer communication. And I think at some point in the, in the future, it's going to take 
you know, maybe five or 10 years to really develop before this is a, a, a very big thing that a lot of people are doing. Um, I think that this is gonna be something where you can capture these scenes and you can share them in your feed or on WhatsApp, uh, just like you share a photo or text today, and you'll be able to pass around these things which are going to be very close to real life experiences that we have, and I think that's gonna be pretty amazing. I, I'm really excited about that. So we have the first student question here. Rachit, what's your question? Hey, Mark. Uh, thank you for coming to IIT Delhi. It's a great honor for us. And my name is Rachit. I'm a student here. So Facebook and me is investing a lot in AI with the opening of Facebook AI Research Lab in Paris and other university collaborations. So what are the, some, some of the future products we can expect from Facebook in this regard? Yeah, so AI is a really exciting area of development. I, you know, I think about it, we have this goal that in five to 10 years, we want to be able to build uh, computer systems which can be better at the main human senses than people are, right? So can, can see better, right? Can, can kind of recognize people or, or things in the world, um, can kind of track as, as um, you know, we travel through the world, uh, can hear better, can translate language uh, better, can, um, can understand language, right? All, all these things which are kind of basic human senses. Um, now, it's important to differentiate that. That does not mean that we're gonna have computers that are smarter than people anytime soon. Um, you know, for a long time, we've been able to build computers that can do specific tasks uh, better than people, but I still think we're, we're very, very far off from having computers which are generally um, more intelligent in, in any way. So th this is one step on, on kind of the, the path to delivering great services. And you know, the type of stuff that we're gonna see is, um, you know, it's less that it's gonna be completely new products, and it's more gonna be that there's this increasing intelligence through a lot of the different things that we do. So let me give you two examples. So one is, uh, this is something that we actually just launched in the last week or two, is, you know, we take accessibility features on Facebook very seriously, right? So for people who are blind or uh, can't see the service, we wanna make sure that they can experience the moments that their friends are sharing with them. So one of the things that we can do now is if you're blind and you can't see a photo, uh, we can have our AI look at the photo and figure out what's in it and then read an explanation of what is in the photo to you. So here's the person who's in the photo, they're riding a bike, here's the scene, here's what's going on. It's not 100%, it'll, it'll improve and it'll keep on getting better in the future, but I mean, I think that that's a really cool thing that you can do when you have computers that can see the world in, in the way that, that people do. And th that's the type of thing that I'm really excited about. Um, a second example. Uh, so I talked about safety check earlier, um, connected to the, the earthquake uh, here. And you know, right now, the best way for people to know that their friends and, and loved ones are safe are to either have you know, you, yourself mark yourself as safe or uh, for you to mark your friend as safe, and then for us to distribute that out to the people who are gonna care, right, to so your friends and family. In the future, I think that it's gonna be possible you know, with satellites and things like that to be able to identify who is in an area um, and know um, um, immediately who is safe, who needs help. Uh, you know, today, a lot of what we do uh, is, you know, for people who are going in for relief efforts, they, they look at maps and they, they see where the areas that are affected are. But, I mean, is that the kind of thing that a computer could do better than a person in the future? Probably, right, and that'll save people's lives. And that, that's the type of stuff that, that I think, um, making it so that computers can see better and can, can hear better, are just gonna unlock all this value for, for the world and are going to save lives, are gonna make um, a lot of content more accessible and just improve a lot of the things that we do already uh, to, to a, a large degree. So that, that's what I'm really excited about there. We have a question here from you, Mohit. Hi, Mark, welcome to India. Uh, Thanks. My, my name is Mohit uh, from Delhi, I'm working as a software testing engineer. My question is how Facebook uh, help uh, those people who are living in the below poverty line and role of Facebook in uneducated people. Oh, sorry, I didn't catch the last part. Ro how can you help illiterate people who are sort of grappling with education, formal education yeah. challenges, yeah. So this is a really interesting area. Um, you know, Facebook, 
our mission is giving people the power to share and making the world more, more open and, and connected. But, you know, I, I also spend some time thinking about what the impact is that, uh, that, that I can have outside of Facebook as well. And I've actually, I've focused a lot of my time on, um, on learning about the education system, um, both in the U.S. And, uh, and increasingly worldwide as well. And we've done a few big projects, um, starting off in, in a city in, uh, called Newark, New Jersey. And, you know, we started that about five years ago. And one of the things that I'm, that I'm proud of is that already in, in just the few years since we got started, the graduation rate in that city has increased, I think it's from 56% to now 69%. So there's still a lot of room for improvement, but I mean 13%, yeah, no, I mean, I'm, I'm really excited about that too. 13% um, in just a few years uh, of work, where that means that whatever improvements w w were, were made in the schools, all the students who are going through that haven't really even gone through the whole system with those improvements already up 13%. I mean, that's a big deal. Um, so that was kind of the first set of things that we did. Um, and then after that, we we took on other initiatives, in, including um, working in our home in, in, in the Bay Area in California uh, to take what we learned from that experience in Newark and um, double down on the things that, that worked well, creating new school models, um, funding the parts that worked really well in the public schools there. And um, that one is newer, so that's only you know, a year, uh, two years old, but we're already really excited about the results that we're starting to see there um, as well. Internationally, um, we, we have a few investments in creating new types of schools um, throughout Africa and, um, and hoping to spread that to, to India um, sometime soon as well. But, you know, I mean, there are a lot of people in the world who don't have access to, uh, to good educational tools. And this is one area where I think not only being able to spread uh, access to good schools, but this is an area where connectivity and access to the internet is really going to be able to help out a lot as well. Because, you know, for all the people who don't have access to a good school, uh, being able to have some basic access to educational resources online um, is, is going to make a really big deal in people's lives. So that, that's, that's a pretty big focus for me. Um, the other area that I'm, that I'm increasingly interested in is really health and science. Right? I mean, one of the things that strikes me is, you know, we have all this amazing technology and the world is getting better and better at such a fast rate. Um, and, you know, we've only really, as a civilization, been really focused on curing the diseases that face us for probably about 100 years, maybe a little bit less even. And, you know, one thing that I think is a little bit crazy, you look around the world, um, I mean, in the U.S., there's the stat that the U.S. government spends about 50 times as much money uh, trying to treat people who are sick as it spends trying to cure the diseases in the first place so that people don't get sick. And I think that that's pretty similar if you look at the exact stats around the world. I don't know exactly what the, the stats here are in India, but I think that there's a really big opportunity to, uh, to change that, right? And for, for our generation of folks to say, hey, you know, the world is getting better at a very fast rate. And instead of just looking at the status quo around this, we should be shifting more of our resources towards longer term investments that can actually try to cure all these diseases, right? So that way, you know, I don't know if, if they'll all be cured in our generation or I mean, maybe not even in our kids, but I do think we can make a big dent and maybe, you know, in our kids' lives or, or their kids' lives, we can create a world where uh, people don't have to suffer from the kind of diseases that, that there are today. Um, so those are, are some pretty big things that, that I think we should be trying to take on as a, as a generation around the world. And if we can make a big impact, then that, that'll, that'll be really, really a big deal. Yeah.